What's up you guys, welcome back. So, you know those people who can't stay in their lane about seasons? Like when it's summer, they're wishing for fall. When it's fall, they're wishing for winter. Yeah, I'm one of those people, but it's only for fall. September 1st comes around and I'm just all fall. So with that being said, I decided to give you guys a nice vampy, vampy look for fall. This was not what I was um, supposed to create in my head and then it turned out like this. I really just wanted to like slip into the fall season and be like here's some nice dainty looks for fall and then I was like BAM! Here's a bold ass look for you. But this is the look I got for you guys so if you'd like to see how we got it then keep on watching. Prepping the skin today I'm going to be using Charlotte Tilbury's Magic Cream. You guys this stuff really is magic. <laughs> um, I feel like my skin just feels so hydrated afterwards and just plump and supple so I feel like Anything that you're gonna put on top is just going to look amazing. For today's foundation, I'm actually only gonna be using one foundation, I know it's crazy, but I really wanna try this Forever Skin Glow from Dior. If any of you guys are fans of Dior, Dior is like one of my all-time favorite brands, just in general. I feel like it's so luxe and beautiful and well-packaged, like I've just always been a fan of Dior. Well, back in the day, they had this foundation. I still have some left. This is their nude foundation, and it was hands down my favorite foundation of all time. And then, from what I know, they discontinued it. And I was so upset, and I had to find a different foundation. You know how that goes. I was talking to Brie about how like this was my all-time favorite foundation, and yada, yada, yada. And she told me that this is supposed to be just like it, maybe similar. I'm not sure. I really didn't do my research into it because honestly, after they discontinued that foundation, I was like so mad at Dior, so I wanted nothing to do with them. Dramatic, I know. So that's going to be up the test today. So I really want to try it and see if it does, you know, live up to this one because I'm telling you guys, this was my favorite. It was the best. Um, but this is in the shade 2W. So I'm hoping they look a little bit different. This looks a lot warmer, but that's okay because I self-tan and you guys know that. So let's give it a try. I just put a tiny little squirt on a pan and I'm gonna take my hourglass foundation brush and buff this into the skin. Okay, good color for my self-tanner, so that really works. Um, but so far, I feel like this might be similar. Besides the obvious like different color change between the two that I had, this feels and looks like the exact same thing, so let's continue on. Grabbing the Too Faced Born This Way Concealer in Light Beige. I'm gonna go ahead and do some covering. I got a couple breakouts here and there. I love this stuff for breakouts. It's like the perfect amount of coverage without making your breakouts or anything look kind of crusty. We all know that look. This doesn't because it's so hydrating. I'm just gonna take a beauty blender and go ahead and blend that out. I want a little bit of brightness, so I'm going to be taking this Juvia's Place Concealer. This is in shade 22. And just lightly dabbing it in areas to help just brighten this all up. I have to mix a little bit more of this Too Faced because that was a little too bright for me. I knew that was going to happen, so I'm just going to mix that in with it. And it should balance it out, but still give some of that brightness there. So far I'm really loving how everything is meshing well together. This foundation does seem like the nude one, so I'm hoping it is the same. Wearing it though is really going to show the test, um, but I really like the way it covered. I felt like it's just this beautiful soft veil. It doesn't look like I have much on, but I'm still covered if that makes sense. So it feels very lightweight but I'm still nicely covered. I really wish you guys could see my skin in person. It's so soft looking, which is what I loved about the original nude Dior foundation in the first place. Grabbing my YSL B65 foundation stick and we are going to contour and add some warmth back to the skin. Then I'm gonna be grabbing my RCMA powder so we can set these areas under my eye, T-zone, all that good stuff. So taking my beauty blender, I love initially using the beauty blender just with small products and just pouncing it in. I feel like it gives it just that airbrushed, flawless look. And not using too much powder will help the integrity of the skin to look like skin. So my initial is just this light pounce everywhere. 
and then you can bake if you would like to. I want to do some slight baking, but I want to do it with the new Anastasia powder. I don't know if it's like brand new, brand new, but it's new to me. Um, this is in the shade Vanilla. So with my Beauty Blender, again, of course, just going to pounce some of that, and I'm going to lightly press this get a little baking action. I really like to bake in this general area. Um, allergies, so that really helps there. Um, and then just right here really helps to give a little additional like, smoothing to the skin. And then um, it's guaranteed to last all day right there. While this is sitting on, I'm gonna take my Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Powder. This is in shade two. I absolutely love just doing a quick dusting in the areas where I didn't set with the RCMA. It leaves your skin looking so smooth. I like to bring a little down the neck too. Um, but nothing too crazy because I do still like a glowy look, but this really just gives that skin that airbrush look. Time to glow up the skin. I can't stop using this, you guys. This is the Charlotte Tilbury um, Film Star Bronze and Glow. This is the best sculpting and highlighting duo I think I've ever owned in my life. And I've been in makeup for a long time. I just absolutely adore this. So we're just gonna go ahead in with the highlighting first. I like a glow, so I go a little crazy with it. But what's nice is this glow is so pigmented that you don't have to like dig in to get that payoff. So you really get it just with that one dip. I'm obsessed with it. I think it's the perfect color as well. What's great is they have different shades too, so there's something for everybody. So now I'm gonna go ahead and sculpt with the powder. And this is the Japanese highlighting brush. It is my favorite brush to do this step with. This brush though I have used for so many things. Um, sculpting, bronzing, blush, everything. This is like my absolute favorite ride or die brush, I swear. For my bronzer, Hourglass Radiant Bronze Light. I like that additional glow, that additional bronze and this gives it to me. Um, one of my favorite bronzers of all time as well. It's baked, so the product payoff is amazing, but it just gives that a little bit of warmth to the skin. I like to bring it down to the neck to really, um, you know, seamlessly blend in the foundation into my self-tanner. So before blush, I'm just gonna go ahead and dust off this extra set and bake that we had. And I really like that it leaves a slight pigment behind. So it really helped just to brighten up that area right here. Blush I wanna be a little bit more darker just because it's a fall look. So I'm gonna be grabbing this blush trio. It's in Berry Adore from Anastasia. I love these blush trios. They're one of my absolute favorites. I think I'm just going to do one of these and then just lightly tap that off and bring that right on the cheeks and then also a little bit up here as well so nothing too crazy but really help just to give a little bit more oomph to the blush i want to do a little bit of cleanup next like right up under here so i'm just taking my rcma powder bring it here i like to go from the tip of the ear to the corner of the mouth but i don't leave mine on long i just do it really really quick because i don't like that stark clean up but it does help just to give a little bit more of a chiseled look to set this all we're going to be using the makeup forever mist and fix do i ever use anything else let's be honest a lot of people ask me what do i love about the spray over other sprays and it's honestly because of the sprayer itself it drenches you. So if you're somebody who doesn't like that feel, just likes a light mist, or is oily and doesn't need that additional hydration, this probably might not be for you. But because I am drier to normal, like I'm, I'm not kidding, it soaks my skin and I'm obsessed with that. But then I fan it down and I mean, it just dries instantly. But with that said, I'm gonna quickly do my brows off camera really quick, just to get them out of the way so we can start this eye look. All right, so my brows are on. And in the course of me doing my brows, the foundation was settling, and I feel like I have something to say about it. I feel like my skin is feeling more matte as the time is going on, which is completely different from what the nude felt like on my skin. So I had to say that. Is it bad? No. My skin looks absolutely flawless. Like, it is so smooth, so soft. 
but I don't like matte foundations, even if they are soft matte. Even if I do use a soft matte foundation, I still mix it in with something a little bit more luminous or natural just to soften up that matte because I do like my skin to be more dewy. Um, so yeah, that's like the only observation that I have right now. We'll see as the time goes on. I love it, but I feel like I won't wear this foundation by itself. I'm gonna end up mixing it like I mix everything. So there's that. But for today's look, I want to be using this new Viseart palette. Now, I don't know how to say the name. I'm just gonna put it in a text right here and you guys tell me how you pronounce it. But I think you pronounce it Milieu? Milieu. Maybe. But it's a neutral matte palette just in time for the fall. So I'm gonna do some fall looks. I have used this palette already once before. I just used more of the softer browns. I obsessed with it but now I want to use more of the deeper shades for this look. Grabbing my Smith 232 brush I'm going to dip into this shade first and we're going to work this kind of all over the lid into the crease onto the lid. I want this to just be a really nice transition shade for all colors that are about to be put on here. What's great about these eyeshadows is you don't need to dig into your pan. When people dig their brushes into their pan, I kind of like die a little bit. <laughs> these are just so simple. You just lightly touch and your brush is loaded. It's, it's that simple. Grabbing my Smith 247 brush, I'm going to dip in... Let's dip into this one. I want to build the depth up just a little bit more before I start putting these berry shades in. Again, just working this into the crease and the outer part of the lid. Then I like to bounce back and forth between my eyeshadow brushes and going in with the first one that we use, the 232. Nothing on it. Just making sure that it kind of blends and seamless together. All right, loving that blend, loving the colors, and no fallout. So now we're gonna be dipping into this shade right here. So pretty. Still the same um, 247 brush from Smith. Just very lightly pick that up. And I'm gonna stamp it. In situations like these where you do have your whole foundation and face done, I like to stamp the product first. That way, that also guarantees you're not having any fallout. And then once majority of that is deposited, you can start with just really small little circles. So you don't want to be just like away because then all that fallout is going to get everywhere. So you just little itty bitty circles. I feel like with pigmented shadows like these, fallout is always so bound to happen. But now with these, now with these, that makes me happy. I also feel like the brush has something to do with it too, so Keep that in mind. Now I'm gonna grab this crown brush and I wanna go into this deeper, it's like a purple shade. And I wanna mix it in with this shade to give it more of that berry look, that deep, dark berry look. So again, just doing that patting motion that I told you guys about. Being careful with that. Just stamping that all right here on the outer portion of the eye. Taking the 247 now whatever's left on it, just mending those all together. So we're gonna be dipping into the darker brown to really smoke it up and grabbing that same um, crown brush, I'm just going to lightly dust off that extra shadow and we're gonna dip into this darker brown. Really want to deepen this up. Make it look a little bit more smoky and wearable for myself. And then after the first layer is done, we just go in with another one and pack that right on top just to give it more depth. Now I'm gonna go into the Natasha Denona Mini Star Palette and we're going to be grabbing this shade right here. It's pretty, it's like a, like a pinky, champagne-y, really pretty. I'm gonna take my MAC 239 brush and just dry. I'm gonna go ahead and pop this right on the inner portion and blend this right towards the center. Just doing little tapping motions to make sure that that is packed on. It's so amazing what these shadows can do dry and on a brush. Just imagine wet or with your finger. These are so creamy and pigmented. I'm obsessed with her eyeshadows. For the under eyes, I'm going to take a little bit more of the brown shades first 
and give it more of a neutral smoke and then we might pop in a little bit of the purple berry-ish. We'll see. All right, we're going to put on a little liner and mascara and the look is complete. All right, mascara and liner are on. I did the look without lashes. I know a lot of you do like when I do some of the looks without lashes just because you don't know how to put them on. So I wanted to give you one without them. I really want to tell you though the mascara that I use because I feel like it gives my lashes their greatest potential. As always, my Dior Maximizer, this is a lash primer. I go ahead and I put this on, I coat my lashes with it, and that right off the start is going to hydrate your lashes, give them a little plump, a little lift. So when you go in with the mascara, it's going to give them, like I said, their highest potential. Then I went in with this Maybelline Total Temptation. If you guys have been following me for a while, you know I'm a huge high-end junkie. I don't really typically use a lot of drugstore, but when I do find good drugstore and I put it in my videos, you guys know I hold it as high as something from high-end. So mascaras were never one of those things for me, like at all. I feel like I can never find a good drugstore mascara, at least for my lashes. But this one, I got it a couple months ago and I've been loving it. I actually need to go get another one because it's finally drying out. I've been recommending it to you guys and you guys like it too, so I'm really happy with this one. But as always, um, since it is drying out and I needed them to lift a little bit more, give some additional separation and curl, I use my Benefit Roller Lash. This is one of my holy grails. This is one of the best mascaras I own. I will forever, <laughs> forever have this in my collection. So for my lip, I'm really debating what I want to do. I do a lot of nude looks on here. I pair almost everything with a nude lip. But I want to take this a little bit further and really make this kind of vampy for the start of fall. One of my all-time favorite fall berry lipsticks that I own is this Sephora one. This is their liquid lipstick. It's in number 14 and I want to say it's Blackberry Sorbet. They don't have the names on here but if you see them on the gondola it'll say the name but it's number 14. I've worn this for years. It's honestly one of my go-to but for some reason this feels like too matchy matchy to me and I want to go even darker. And another one of my all-time favorite lipsticks, dark lipsticks that I own, is the NARS Train Blue. Give it to me. And I feel like with this being so colorful, well not, some might not think this is colorful, but it's pretty colorful for me. I think I want to counter it with something really deep and dark, so... Let's try this on and we'll see if we like it. I'm gonna take this KKW lip liner. It's in shade two. It's a deep, darker brown, so hopefully this will look good with that. Now this lipstick is darker than this lip liner, but it just gives a base for this lipstick. But even this by itself looks really pretty. But I want this, I want this more. Okay, wow. One, I'm obsessed with this lip. I know some of you out there might be thinking, okay, Amanda, that is way too dark for me to wear, and I totally understand that. But I keep it so nude on my channel that I had to throw something at you guys. For me, though, I love a dark lip. I can, I, to me, like, lips can't be dark enough. So anytime I'm doing makeup or I see somebody who's like, which one should I wear? I'm always like, go for the darker one. There's just something about darker lips that just seems so intimidating, but in the most, like, confident, sexual way possible. <laughs> okay, I'm, like, veering off somewhere different, but you know what I mean? Like, there's just something about a dark lip that I feel like I just own shit, you know? But I feel like that lip liner, lipstick combo really did pull it together because it kind of toned down that purpleness and made it a little bit more neutral, but you still have that depth in there. And I'm here for it. But yeah, guys, this finishes the look. I hope you like it. I hope it inspires you to be a little bit more vampy this fall season. Fall is my absolute favorite time of the year. I live in the Midwest. Summer sucks here. So in the summertime, I travel other places because it's just like, why even bother here? We have summer for three days and it's humid and raining the entire time. But then after summer, everything dies and becomes so wonderful. <laughs> That sounds so morbid. Now you guys get to see who I really am. But let me know in the comments below what your favorite season is. And let me know if you guys want to see more fall looks like so. If you want them to see some softer fall looks, smokier, vampier fall looks, let me know. Halloween's right around the corner, so I'm going to be starting Halloween looks soon. If you guys have any looks that you want to see for Halloween, also drop that down below as well. Do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe to all my videos if you guys like to see more. And also, do not forget to follow me on Instagram. I am Amanda Devon on there. I'm way more at interactive, so hit me up there. We chit-chat. I talk to all my followers. I love you guys so much. If you ever have any questions or need ideas about anything, I'm your girl. I'm here for you. But that's it for this video. I love you guys so much, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.